Here we're gonna solve a nice viewer suggested problem. So our goal is to solve the following system of polynomial equations. So notice we've got a degree two polynomial right here and a degree two polynomial right here. And the question did not ask what domain we want to solve over. So in this video, we're going to just find the real solution. And I guess that's a spoiler is that there is only one real solution but I'll point out how we could find the complex solutions or any other solutions there might be kind of along the way. And I wanna say that there's like a fancier way to write this, and that would be we could describe the algebraic set defined by these polynomials. So that would be like an algebra geometric way of stating this same problem. And I wanna point out that if these polynomials satisfy some certain rules, this is actually an affine variety. So if you ever want to sound fancy, just use some terms from algebraic geometry or somehow get the word category in there and everyone will think you're super smart. Okay, so we're going to use the cubic formula in order to solve this. So the cubic formula is really heinous and we're not going to derive it or anything, but it boils down to this. So we've got ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals zero has the following solutions. So I've got solutions there, even though right now I only have one solution. So it's the cube root of all of this stuff. So I'm not gonna read that off. You can look at it if you want to, or maybe look it up on Wikipedia or something if you wanna see it all typed out. I wanna point out that we've got a square root inside of this cube root. And inside of the second cube root, we also have a square root. And these things are like radical conjugates of each other inside each of the cube roots. Then we've got this b minus 3a term outside of the whole thing. And notice I have up there written as has solutions, but I just said that this only gives us our real solution. So how can we get the other solutions? Well, we can get the other solutions by adding something right here. I guess I should say multiplying something right here. So maybe I'll call it uh, zeta sub three, zeta sub three, and what do I mean by zeta sub three? So zeta sub three is any third root of unity. So that means zeta equals e to the two pi i over three times k, where k runs between zero, one, or two. Notice if you run it past two, then you loop back to previous values, so you only need those three values. So if k equals zero, then this zeta is equal to just one, and then if k is equal to one, well, it's e to the two pi i over three, and then, well, you can see what it is for the other case as well. So that's how you would get all of your complex solutions, by including a cube root of unity right here. And then there's this other theorem from algebraic geometry that says if we solve this over an appropriate domain, there should be exactly four equals two times two solutions. This is known as Bayes' theorem. So why is two times two important? Well, we've got two polynomials, and here this is degree two and this is degree two, so you're multiplying the degree of the two polynomials. But look, we only have room for three solutions at this point. The real solution, and then those two other complex solutions from including this root of unity. So where's the other solution? Well, we're not gonna look at it super carefully, but it is a point at infinity that you would see inside of some sort of complex projective space. Okay, so we've said a bunch of fancy stuff about this problem. Now I'll go ahead and get rid of all of this stuff and we'll actually calculate one of the solutions to this equation. Okay, we talked a bit about this system of polynomial equations. Now we're ready to solve it. So I'm actually gonna be using a completing the product strategy on this first equation to simplify it a little bit. So I had a video where we did a couple of examples of completing the product and I think it's a nice trick. And it's honestly not a trick that I really knew until I started doing all these math contest type videos. And so it really pays off to kind of learn those at any point. All right, so like I said, we're gonna take this first equation and we're gonna add two to both sides. So that's gonna give us xy minus x minus y plus one equals two. I guess I should have said we're gonna add one to both sides, giving us a two on the right-hand side. 
But notice that allows us to factor this left-hand side of the equation. So let's maybe see how that goes. We can factor a x out of this first term and a minus one out of this second term. So that's gonna give us x times y minus one minus y minus one equals two, like that. But now we've got this like greatest common factor here which is y minus one if we think about putting a coefficient of one right there. And so that gives us the following equation. We have x minus one times y minus one equals two. Now from here, what we wanna do is solve for one of the variables and plug it into this equation. And you know, I'm not claiming this is the easiest way to do it. This is just the way that I wrote down to do it really quickly. So that's the strategy we're gonna take. So since this equation is linear in y but quadratic in x. We're gonna solve for y because that'll be a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna have y minus one equals two over x minus one, just by dividing both sides by x minus one. But now that's gonna give us y equals two over x minus one plus one. Okay, so now we have y written in terms of x. So we'll now take this version of y in terms of x and we'll throw it into our second equation and see what that gives us. Okay, so we've got 2x squared minus x times 2 over x minus 1 plus 1 and then minus 2 over x minus 1 minus 1. So I'll just go ahead and distribute the minus sign across to this as we're subtracting y. And we have all of that is equal to 0. Okay, so now let's maybe multiply this out a little bit. So that's going to give us 2x squared minus 2x over x minus 1 minus x minus 2 over x minus 1 minus 1 equals 0. Now we can go ahead and clear the denominator by multiplying both sides of this equation by x minus one. So let's see what that's gonna give us. That's gonna give us two x squared times x minus one minus two x minus x times x minus one minus two minus x plus one equals zero, like that. Okay, so again, we distributed the minus sign through here to give us x plus one. Now let's expand that a little bit. So here we'll have two x cubed minus two x squared minus two x minus x squared plus x from distributing the minus x onto the minus one. And then next minus two minus x plus one equals zero. Now we can start combining like terms. So notice there is only one x cubed term. And so that's gonna give us this two x cubed. That's this one right here. Notice we have two terms that are attached to x squared. We have this one and this one. So those are gonna to combine together to give us minus three x squared. Then we've got a couple of x terms. So notice that this plus x and this minus x will cancel, leaving us only with this minus 2x. So we've got a minus 2x. And then for constants, we've got a minus 2 and a plus 1. So that's going to give us a minus 1 equals 0. So check it out at the bottom here. We've got a cubic polynomial that our x component must satisfy. All right, let's go ahead and bring that up and then we'll find the x value. Okay, on the last board we derived a cubic polynomial that x must satisfy. So it was 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 2x minus 1. And I want to point out by very, very, very similar methods, we can get a cubic polynomial that y must satisfy. And that's y cubed minus 2y squared plus, minus 2y plus 1. So now we'll use the cubic formula on this. So let's just point out that here we're using the cubic formula that was on the first board. So I won't recall that. And I also won't do all of the arithmetic calculations, but I will say that this is gonna give us the following value of x. So we have x is equal to 1 sixth, and then it's gonna be times a bunch of stuff, and the bunch of stuff will be three plus the cube root of 135 minus six times the square root of 249, like that. And then we have the companion term to that, 
which is going to be the cube root of 135 plus 6 times the square root of 249. So that's our real value of x, which will satisfy this equation. And then you can get the complex values again by putting um, roots of unity right here, third roots of unity right here. Then how do you get the y value? Well, you've got a couple of strategies. You can use that equation that we had on the last board, which related x and y, or you can solve this equation. If you solve this equation, it's a bit tricky because you have to be careful to match the correct solutions um, with each other because there will be like complex solutions of that. So maybe it's a bit easier to use the other method. And then like I said, on the very first board, there will also be um, a solution at the point at infinity if you're looking in the complex projective space. So I'm just gonna put y equals some stuff here because it's indeed pretty similar to what's happening with x, but even a little bit more gnarly. Okay, that's a good place to stop.